Thanks, Jeff. Well, I'm still a little bit confused on the, the Kim reference. Like, I've, I've heard of her, but I'm not entirely sure who she is or, or what, what? she... <laughs> You've been living under a rock, Simon. <laughs> I haven't really been keeping up with the Kardashians or something there. <laughs> All right, we're uh, going off script, going straight into battle yeah, mode, I see. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Last leg of the tour. I'm hoping, hoping your pro knowledge is a little bit more up to date, so we'll see. <laughs> All right, so I want to start off with a small one, but for me it was quite an important one. That's the fact that the catalog pane is now available in version 2 of ArcGIS Pro. This includes a new favorite section, and this is where you can store your commonly used database, folder, server, and OGC connections. And what this means is every time you launch a new Pro project, you don't have to keep reconnecting to these data sources. Now, of course, you can connect to your portal. So I'm going to hunt down a buildings layer. And that's because I want to start capturing some building footprints against this new imagery that's in the map here. Now, the next feature I'd like to show is the editing grid. What I can do is plonk this on the corner of a building, then align it to the wall of the building. And this will ensure that when I'm digitizing, I'll capture parallel and perpendicular lines. So as I start to create a new feature, we'll see that the cursor is snapped either to fall directly on the grid or lines that are inferenced from the grid. Digitizing and talking is tricky. <laughs> what what this results in is I capture more geometrically correct shapes. Now, same area, but we also captured some LiDAR. This is just filtered down to the, the building returns. And down on the seafront, we have a vector building, but it doesn't quite marry up to the LiDAR that was captured, so the roof detail is missing. So what I can do is edit this feature by intersecting it right down the middle of the ridge of the roof, and then drag that up and snap it to the LiDAR. And that's just one of the many new powerful features in 3D editing. What do you reckon? All right, off to a good start. Let's see. Um, I'm also going to start with a simple but a really important one. So I know there are many of you that need to make static maps. And with ArcGIS Pro, creating layouts, or what you might know as map templates, has never been easier. So here we're looking at a zoning map. And everything that I might commonly want to add to a layout is simply a click away on this insert ribbon. So for example, let's add a picture to this. And notice that when I'm doing this, I'm selecting a PNG file that has a transparent background. Now, the reason I point that out is because it's not possible in ArcMap. So great little addition to ArcGIS Pro. Also a click away, adding an extent indicator to this map, or adding grids and graticules. Really, really easy. Now, being an ex-ArcMap user myself, what I love is that I can have multiple maps and layouts in the one project. But I think by far the best thing about layouts in ArcGIS Pro are these map series pages. Now, notice that as I click through the pages, everything in my map updates dynamically, from the map to the legend and even the chart that I have there. So it's been never been easier to create and to share map layouts. I see you've slipped in a couple of charts since the yeah. Sydney one. Well, that's right. I thought I was going to be unveiling the charting capabilities. <laughs> so I'd like yes, to show a, a new feature in ArcGIS Pro, and that's the, the brand new Arc charting capabilities. <laughs> so here we have He's a... threatened. <laughs> here we have a box plot showing the median total personal income from the latest census data using Melbourne's nine SA4 regions. And as you'd expect for a city, the inner city has the highest um, median and max values. Now we have a second chart here. This is a, a bar chart. And this is using, it's showing the same metric, but using that smaller SA2 geography boundary. The real power comes in. What I can do is dock this to the side. I can filter the chart. So as I select features in the first chart, they flow through to the second chart but also to the main map interface as well. Now, here we have some traffic incidents. These are collected from Waze, um, a crowdsourced application. And we've got a bar chart here showing the breakdown of the incidents by type. 
Also worth noting that the symbology flows from your map down to the charts. So that's not me cooking up anything behind the scenes. And we have a second chart showing the subtype. And what I can do is filter these charts based upon the current extent. So whatever is in this bounding box of this map will be respected by those charts. So as I zoom in and start to pan around, those charts will update accordingly. Not only the extent, but this is a temporal data set. So as I slide through the time slices, again, the charts will respect both extent and time. Now, just one last one. Those that were lucky enough to get up to the mountains this year, this is the Mount Buller Resort. And I think most of the mountains had a pretty good snowfall this year. And these are just some of the southern slopes and some of those ski runs. And it's now very easy to create 3D aware profile charts from your Z-Aware features. So here showing the elevation against distance of these different ski runs. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's all right. Not seeing much snow there, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to let that slide. All right, I'm going to go on to something really fun. OK, so what we're looking at here is some building footprints in Parramatta in Sydney and the existing train line that runs through it. Now, the, the buildings are coloured so that the lighter the colour, the more accessible they are to the train stations. You might have heard that a, a new light rail will be going in, and that's to increase accessibility in the suburb. Now, we all know that ArcGIS Pro is great for showing a scenario like this in two, with 2D data, but what I love is how easy it is to convert over to a 3D view. Now, I can just go and share this as a web scene, or I could have a little bit of fun with animation. So everything I need to create an animation is available for me on this animation ribbon. And essentially all it is is stringing together a number of frames that will make up my video. Now I can do that in a couple of ways. So I can import existing bookmarks, which adds it down to the bottom here, or I can just pan around like I normally would and append the next frame. It's really, really that simple. ArcGIS Pro does all the rest for me. No hands, that's doing it itself. Pretty cool. And when it's finished, when you're happy, you can export it out to a number of different formats, including YouTube. So I urge you to give it a try, and maybe you could, no, you, Simon, you could become the next YouTube sensation. Wouldn't you like that? I can see from you. Your search history, your, your music tastes are a little bit different to mine. <laughs> That's what you took away from this demo? Seriously? <laughs> oh, God. I have a teenage sister, I promise. <laughs> I do, really. OK, so raster functions. These are operations that can be performed on the fly against your raster data sets. Now, ArcGIS Pro includes over 100 of these raster functions, things like NDVI, tasseled cap, classification, segmentation, mathematical operators, and, and plenty more. Now, here in the main map, this is the Rocklands area. This is just off from the Grampians National Park in Victoria. And we've got a few Landsat scenes here. So this is one that's just a, a week before a bushfire. This one is a day into that bushfire. And this last one is 11 months after that bushfire. And what we can do is string together a series of those raster functions into what we call a raster function chain. This specific raster function chain is calculating a normalized burn index. So it's a little bit similar to Model Builder and that it needs a couple of input parameters. And that's a before and an after scene. So we'll, we'll throw those in. And this will perform the calculation on the fly without changing any of the actual underlying values in those raster data sets. And the results of this allow me to understand how the vegetation has regrown in this region. And you could use this to I don't know, prioritize any assisted revegetation projects that you might have going on. Pretty powerful stuff. Oh, um, no, sorry. <laughs> Rasters, really? Come on, that's old news. Get, get with the times. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something really new. OK, so Arcade, it's the new expression language, portable expression language, that works across the ArcGIS platform with dynamic symbology and labeling. Now, what we've got here are some stormwater pits that I've downloaded from Logan City Council's ArcGIS open data site. What I really want, though, is a map that always shows me which pits are due for inspection. 
And that's where Arcade can come in. It can provide me with a dynamic interpretation of my data. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's, let's have a look at the symbology properties of this layer. And I want to vary the symbology by attribute and apply a transparency on the low values. Now, if we look at this custom arcade expression that I've got in here, I'm looking at the last inspection date and calculating a difference on the fly to today's date. So for me to use that now with symbology, what that results in is a transparency on the pits that were recently inspected, really highlighting the things that require action. Really, really useful tool. Now, I can also use this on labeling as well. So if we have a look at the labeling properties of this layer, I'm saying anything that's owned by private or TMR, basically not Logan City Council, I want to add a label that gives an asset ID and an asset type. And the result of that are these labels here. Now remember, this is all on the fly and dynamic. So as I update my data, my map will remain up to date as well. Pretty cool stuff. But what I love the most is that it is a portable language. So when I share this to my WebGIS, the symbology and the labeling all comes through as well. So it's really never been easier to, for me to move from my desktop environment through to my WebGIS. Modern, cool stuff. I, I'll admit, that isn't pretty impressive. And look, right. I, I'll also admit that I know that you know your way around ArcGIS Pro far better than me. Oh, like, I'm still a little bit late to the party. I've still got a bit of catching up to do, but I do have one tip. Okay. Like, I've done a few conferences like this before, and if you, if you want to win over the crowd quite easily, you just need to, just to crack a good joke. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bear with me. <laughs> I'm laughing already, it's better be good. What map element plays in the band? I have no idea. The symbol. God. <laughs> all right, all right. Let me, let, me, let me see if I can win you back with just, just one last demo. So I'm sure many of us in the room have been through that fairly tedious process of having to, to geo-reference imagery. And this will be a familiar feeling where you've been sent some imagery, drop it onto the map, and it's not where you expect it to be. It's, it's over at zero, zero somewhere, and it's missing its spatial reference information. So, like before, you go through that familiar process of launching the geo-reference tools and walking it into the current display. You see it's nearer where it needs to be, but still not quite right. Now we can launch this new tool, and that's the auto geo-reference tool. And what this will do is it will cross-compare your imagery with the underlying imagery, in this case, it's the world imagery service from ArcGIS Online, something that we will have access to. And it does feature matching. It looks at the similarities and dissimilarities between those two images. And in this case, it's created 43 control points for me and done a pretty good job of evenly spacing those out across my image. And I don't know, 43 control points, that would have taken me a good I don't know, two or three hours to, to do. So that's, that's saved me a heap of time. That's pretty cool, surely. Yeah, OK. All right, that's pretty cool. I have to admit that. Well, look, that's just a few of our favorite things. And if you want to come and talk to us afterwards, please do. Um, yeah, we'd love, to, we'd love to have a chat. Oh, if you're lucky, Simon might have a few more jokes for you as well. Thank you so much. Thanks.